Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at what buffers are and how they react in order to maintain a constant pH when a strong acid or a strong base is added to a buffer. Our main objective is to explain how buffer solutions work. Buffers are solutions that resist changes to their pH when you add either a strong base or a strong acid. The composition of a buffer is a weak acid in its conjugate base or a weak base in its conjugate acid. So the buffer solution already has both an acid and a base present in it. And so this is why it can react with either. Um, if you um, have a buffer solution and you add an acid to it, the, um, that's like you're adding H plus ions. And so the H plus ions can react with the conjugate base, the A minus ions, and this reaction can go in the reverse direction. So if you add acid um, to the buffer, then the uh, conjugate base form that's here present in the buffer will react with that added H plus ions, right? Because when we add acid, we're adding H plus ions. A minus plus H plus will give us HA, the molecular form. So you'll see that over here on the left-hand side where the, um, the concentration of A minus, the conjugate base, has fallen and the concentration of HA has increased. On the opposite direction, if we add base, that means that we're adding OH minus ions, and OH minus ions will react with H plus ions to make water, so that effectively is removing a product. The reaction shifts to the right, and so we are going to um, uh, increase how much A minus we have, and we're going to decrease how much H plus we have. And so basically what we're doing in this process is we are swapping out that strong base OH minus for the weak base A minus, which is just barely ionized. Ditto on the opposite side, when we added acid, we essentially swapped the strong acid H plus for the weak acid HA, which again is not very much ionized, and so it didn't really affect the pH of the solution very much. So let's say that your job is to go into the lab and make a buffer with a particular pH. Well, there are sort of three parts to this process. First part is you've got to figure out what chemicals you're going to use to make that buffer. And the best uh, set of chemicals, right, because you need a, a conjugate pair, the best conjugate pair for a, for a buffer at a particular pH is um, one who has um, that conjugate pair has a pKa that's close to your desired pH. Now remember p just means you take the minus log. So pKa just means you take minus the log of the Ka value. So if you want a buffer with a certain pH, you're looking for a bunch of um, conjugate acids that have um, a pKa that's close to that pH value. That helps you choose what chemicals to use. So for this example, we're asked to determine which chemicals would be the best choice for a buffer with a pH close to 4. And we're given three different weak acids to pick from and the Ka's for those. So from those Ka values, let's just calculate pKa. And we're looking for which one has the pKa closest to 4. So for nitrous acid, I would take 5.6 EE negative 4 and hit log and change the sign. And I get a pKa for nitrous acid of 3.25. That's kind of close to 4. Let's see how these other ones do. For formic acid, I've got 1.8 EE4 negative, and I'll take the log and change the sign, and its pKa is 
And last but not least, let's take 4 ee negative 8 and take the log of that and change the sign. And we've got about a 7.40 for its pKa. So um, if we want our buffer to be around 4, the best chemical to pick uh, out of this list of choices would be formic acid, since formic acid has a pKa of 3.74, but a buffer has to have a weak acid and its conjugate base. So we're looking for something that has formic acid and its conjugate base, which would be the formate ion. The ic acid came from the 8 ion, so formic acid um, and then formate ion. And of course, we can't have just a bottle of negative ions. So when you go into the stock room, you're going to be looking for something like sodium formate or potassium formate, um, just something to make that an electrically neutral compound. As far as actually making this in the lab, there are a couple of different approaches you can take. If you have in your lab a bottle of formic acid and a bottle of sodium formate, great. You can just go ahead and combine those two chemicals. You can just take your weak acid and its conjugate base, or your weak base and its conjugate acid, and figure out, OK, how many grams of each do I need? Weigh it all out, combine them up, and you're good to go. But what often will happen when you're making buffers is you may have the weak acid, but not the conjugate base. So for instance, you might have formic acid, but not have sodium formate sitting around. Well, that's all right, because you can create a buffer by starting with that weak acid and neutralizing half of it with a strong base. So if you take that weak acid and react it with base, the acid will turn into its salt, right? So if you have HA and you react that with, say, sodium hydroxide for a strong base, that's going to give you water plus sodium formate. And so if you neutralize half of the acid, you will have half of the acid you started with and an equal amount of sodium formate. And so if you have a weak acid and its conjugate base in equal amounts, you've got a buffer. So that's one way to do it. You can um, uh, halfway neutralize your weak acid with a strong base, and that will give you a buffer solution. Uh, likewise, if we started with a weak base, we could halfway neutralize it with a strong acid, something like ammonia plus hydrochloric acid, and that would create um, ammonia plus the ammonium ion to have our weak base and its conjugate acid. So those are two different experimental ways, um, and it all depends on what you have in your chemical stock room as to which approach is most practical. The last um, uh, component of making a buffer is how much of each chemical should you use. Well, you get the biggest buffer capacity when you have roughly equal amounts of your weak acid and your conjugate base. A, uh, the, the term buffer capacity means how much strong acid or strong base the buffer can absorb and still not change its pH significantly. Um, and so you really do want, uh, for an effective buffer, uh, to have about equal amounts of your weak acid and your conjugate base. If you want to tailor that ratio and get an exact amount of that optimum uh, ratio for a given pH, uh, you may want to use something we're going to introduce shortly called the Henderson Hasselbalch to or the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, and use that equation to um, calculate the exact ratio that you would need for a given pH. But generally speaking, we just want to have approximately equal amounts of your weak acid and conjugate base. So our main objective was to explain how buffer solutions work. Um, there are several ways of saying this. One way is that uh, it's going to swap uh, your added strong acid 
uh, for a weak acid, or if you've added a strong base, it'll swap it out for a weak base. Um, and, and the reactions that'll take place if you've got your um, strong acid uh, that's added, it will react with the conjugate base form that's present and um, I turn that into HA, the molecular form of the acid. Um, if you add strong base, it will um, react with the molecular form to generate more A minus. And so in both of these cases, we're swapping something that is strong, the H plus or the OH minus, um, for something that is weak, either the HA or the A minus. And because the weak ones are not very much ionized, we're going to um, end up with just a little teeny tiny change in pH instead of a great big change in pH.